So I want to talk today about resurrection as the basis of apostleship. Resurrection as the basis of apostleship. If apostleship is too clumsy for you, you can say resurrection as the basis of apostolic call. Resurrection as the basis, as the foundation for apostolic call. Resurrection. And it's going to be interesting. It's teaching. It's teaching. At the end of it, there will be some inspiration to bless you, to heal you. Even as I'm speaking, things are leaving you. Come on. I say, as I'm speaking, everything of darkness is leaving you. Everything of God's healing, God's deliverance, God's breakthrough, God's power, God's glory. Everything of his wealth, of his wonder, they are coming upon you. So as I speak, there will be divine transaction, transaction, exchange. Your pain will be taken away in exchange for God's, God's touch, God's blessing, God's peace. So get ready for, for being a place, an epicenter for divine, divine transaction. Every transaction has to do with take and give, give and take, exchange of goods, commodities, services. That's what transaction, transaction, transaction is utilitarian. In terms of use, it brings you some benefits and you, you let it go. So today, God is going to, there's going to be divine transaction, divine exchange, divine exchange by which loads will be taken off your shoulder and your head. And peace will descend like a mist, like a mist, like a fog coming down upon you. The scripture talks about the Mount of Transfiguration as Jesus was there with them suddenly, suddenly while he was praying, a cloud descended upon them. And then they saw a Jesus they never saw. Rather, they saw the Jesus they never saw. So there was... There was transaction taking place. God took their humanity and gave them sight of divinity. God took away their blindness and gave them vision. So who is an apostle? What is apostleship? What is a... Let's, let's, are you ready for me this morning? Or should we do benediction and let you go? Sincerely, because I can actually at this point take offering. It looks like everybody is seated, so we can do offering at this point. Can do offering and do announcement and go after all. After all, I've, I've, we have already blessed you with wonderful. Let's talk about apostle. Glory to God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Are you ready to write? You know this. Every day we teach, every day we come here, we are in a school. In a school. If I pastor you and you don't have knowledge, more suffering. More suffering. <laughs> Sincerely, more suffering. There's no way I can pastor you and you don't have knowledge. I've been given the grace of knowledge by the grace of God. By the grace of God. It's not boasting, I'm just honoring God. I've been given, I didn't say I, I have been given the grace of knowledge. And I love knowledge. I love those who know. Those who appeal to me are those who know. Who know? You must know something. Don't tell me your age. Tell me what you know. I honor you for your age, but I want to follow you, not because you are old, not because you have been in ministry forever, because you have something that when you tell me, you blow me away. I find something in you that opens my eyes. Shout knowledge. Then if you want to talk like you belong to GFCC, shout aleteya. If you want to annoy people like I annoy, say abia agabia. Okay, so. Apostleship. The word apostle comes from the Greek word apostolos. <laughs> like full mouth, full mouth. Like speaking full mouth, full mouth. Apostolos. Apostolos is just, you know, Greek is just so it's easy to spell it somehow, somehow. Apostolos. That's it. So, the word apostle is from the Greek word apostolos. And apostolos comes from the, is a, is a result of the combination of two Greek words. Apo and, apo and stolos. Apo and stelo, rather. 
Apo and Stelo. So Apostolos is a combination of two words. Apo and Stelo. What is Apo? Let's look at Apo. Apo means away. Away. Like telling somebody, go away. Go away. So Apo means away. Apo. Apo means away from. It can also mean it can also mean away to. What is away? Say away. Like when we tell somebody, get away from my sight. So that is the meaning of apo. Are we done? Can we move forward? Say apo. So we can move away. So stelo. I told you apostolos comes from apo and stelo. What is the meaning of a, a, of stelo? Stelo means to arrange like you know arrangement to arrange something now make you arrange you arrange a little thing there for me arrange arrange some some box for me I'm cash trapped I'm broke see some people I'm broke for you to be broke it means you already had money <laughs> some people say I'm broke it's a lie you are not broke you don't have anything <laughs> somebody who is broke means until now, the person used to have something. Then I beg you, arrange something for me. I'm broke. You are not broke. <laughs> Say, arrange something for me. I don't have anything. <laughs> that one is correct. <laughs> so, uh, stelo means to arrange. Say, to arrange. Say, it, let me hear you. To arrange. arrange. Stelo means to prepare. Say, to prepare. Please write it down. We will construct it. We bring the Apo and Stelo and it becomes apostolos and then you have an understanding. Don't worry. Let's keep moving. It means to prepare. It also means to gather. To gather. To gather something. To gather people. To gather resources. So Stelo means to arrange, to prepare and to gather among other things. Now if you literally so I'm going to give you first of all the literal meaning just flowing literally from the combination of Apo and Stelo. I'll give you that meaning. Then I will give you implication and usage. So the meaning of the use of the word apostolo, apostolos or apostle in the Christian context. But we have to first of all deal with the literal. And of course you already know the literal. The literal combining Apo and stello means to arrange away. Like, let's let's do some demonstration. Bros, come. You come, yeah. My brother, come. You know, you come. And then um, let's do some arrangement. Who else will come? My DJ, come. <laughs> My DJ is like, call me, call me, call me. Yeah, I've called you. I've come. Um, who else will come? Can we ask your wife to join us? You will be wonderful. Beautiful lady. <laughs> Permit us to have the honor of you. Come inside. Stand by your husband. No? What, my, what God has joined. No man should. Okay. So, you know, I'm going to arrange with your family. You stand here. We're arranging you away. <laughs> so, you know, the arrangement here is that he's wearing black. black. And there is gold and he has this key don't know whatever this key is but the point is this you know in this family we just have to put things together you understand what i mean so the rice that you made you know you just put a little and the meat you will have eaten <laughs> so let's just put it there. please madam the money for this month for market and all of that please you bring it we arrange and um, arrange him so arrange him away for you go we have arranged you go away <laughs> Now, do you understand that? That also was preparation. And you see, we were gathering. So we gathered and we prepared and we arranged and somebody went away. That's the literal meaning of apostle. That's the literal meaning. So when we talk about an apostle, there's arrangement, there's preparation, there's gathering, and there's a way. Now, let's talk about usage. Christian usage and context. Some of us will have made a career in teaching. 
in the university, which is what I wanted to run away from the seminary for. <laughs> wanted to take my degree, go do masters and go into a PhD and, and go and mesmerize people in. I just love teaching and all of that, but the Holy Spirit told us, leave that thing, let's stay here. And I like it. So, but this is just so beautiful. So this is arranging away literally. Then when we talk about the implication of it in the Christian context, so when we use the word apostle in the church, apostle as believers, apostle in the body of Christ, what does it mean? It means a messenger. So when we arranged and prepared and sent him away, it means we sent him on a mission as a messenger. We put a message in his hand and made arrangements, made preparation, gathered resources away. It's not resources gathered for keep. It's not arrangement to stay. It's not preparation to stay, to remain. It's preparation to go away. Arrangement to go away. Gathering to go away. If you have light, shout Aleteya. That's it. I want you, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me, uh, you know, I wanted to go straight and talk about John chapter 20, but as I sat down at my desk in the office after the first service, the Holy Spirit just told me, why don't you, why don't you do something? I said, okay, I will do it. And I just said, okay, let's just do something. I will, we'll see the connection, don't worry, we'll see the connection. Just follow me. Tell somebody, follow me. Oh, come on. Tell somebody, follow me. <laughs> Or like follow him. And praise God, praise God. Because if you say follow me, where are you going to? <laughs> but I know where I'm taking you to, and it's so beautiful. So, an apostle is one who is sent on an errand, sent with a message as a messenger, having been arranged, prepared, gathered, and sent away. One with a message in his mouth. Or later, a message in his hand, or words of message in his mouth, in his spirit. Who does not just wake up one day? This is this is very important. Somebody who does not just who, who, who has not woken up one day and just say, Oh, it will be nice to be an apostle. Therefore, from today, don't call me pastor again. Now I'm now an apostle. Tell us about the arrangement. Tell us about the preparation. Tell us about the gathering. Then tell us about the mission, the message. Because these are elements that come together to form apostleship. There must be an arrangement. In Isaiah chapter 6, after the, the encounter that Isaiah had of the divine, the seraphs, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord highly I saw the Lord on the throne highly lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple. Next verse, wrong with me. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. Come on, run. And one cried out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Next verse. And the post of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out and the house was filled with smoke. Glory. So I said, woe is me for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal which, which he had taken from the tongues from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is pushed. Look at all of this is called arrangement. Preparation. Gathering. If you can see arrangement, let me see your hand. Come on, come on. If you can see arrangement in the scripture, First of all, encounter. Purification. That encounter is the beginning. The very beginning of apostleship. That encounter is the foundation. Then the arrangement, the preparation. The arrangement, the preparation. The gathering of resources. In terms of resources, you can see life coal from the tongue of fire. From the altar 
taken. Activities are going on in preparation. There is a, a divine economy being unfolding before as the arrangement of the divine household. Uh, things being arranged because God is about sending one on a mission with a message. An apostle is about being introduced. This is in the Old Testament. And it gives you a clear picture of apostleship before we come to the New Testament. Look at that. Next verse. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then I said, Come on, read it loud. Here. Yeah. Then I said, That's it. Preparation. Gathering, arrangement, and then the mission. Listen to the next verse. And he said, Go, go away, Apo. <laughs> go, so you are not staying here. Go. <laughs> so when one says, I am an apostle, where are you sent to? Who sent you? What has been the preparation, the arrangement, and the gathering? <laughs> Until these conditions are met, it is a personal claim without divine substance, which is why we have multiplication of titles in the church without impacts, without divine presence. Church has become a place of human arrogance where we apportion for ourselves titles that seem good to us without divine backings so that we now have social ecosystem in the church where we honor ourselves so you go for function we spend too much time talking about human positions and how old they have been serving the Lord and there are different titles and when we call them apostle, and there are so many apostles, and this one is old, he will raise his hand, I'm sorry. Address me correctly. Senior apostle. I'm sorry. Now I tell you, I, now you know, when I say I don't have friends, <laughs> who has an apostle, a senior apostle will hear this and love me. <laughs> That's what I was sent to do. <laughs> That's my call. <laughs> Sincerely, this is not what I planned for this morning. For people mean car, can I? Maybe zoom now. <laughs> oh, praise God! Praise God! Absolutely, I didn't like my call. I have learned to embrace my call because I can only have one person. Me, I have to be my friend. I don't like me, but I have to be me. So this, is, and he said, "Go and tell these people. Go and tell these people. What will you tell the messenger? This is a messenger. I tell you, apostolos. The apostle is a messenger." There must be a message. There must be the sender. There must be specific mission and preparation for mission. And this mission is away from you. Away from your personal interest. Away from your, your, your self-vision and ambition. This mission, this message is not about your projection, your self-aggrandizement and your elevation and being more important than others. It's not about your title and entitlement. It's not about your minds and your mind. It's not about whatever. It is about the one who sends you and what he wants you to do. And what he wants you to do defines you. And it's a way. This way may not be a locational way. May not be a way away from here to Saudi Arabia. It may not be a way from. It may just be. It's all about away from yourself. You may have wanted to be a cattle rearer, but you say, "I'm sending you to these people." You still live with them, but the most important thing about it is not the cattle that you are rearing. You say, "You know, I love business. I love to buy and sell. I don't like to steal either. I don't want to." He said, "Go to these people." means what defines you now is no longer your buying and selling ability. Now these people, tell them. Tell them. So there are more apostles than we know. The main, the real apostles, we don't know, they don't have titles. They don't have ordination. They don't have offices. They don't have rights everywhere. 
People are claiming them. It's just that in their little ways, they have been taken away from their plans. Taken away from their interest and selfishness. And planted in a mission that they will not have chosen. Given a commission they will, have not, they will not have asked for. Rise to your feet. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Visit me with the apostleship of my life. Come on, come on. You are going to pray. This one, there is a transition. Raise your right hand. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Visit me with the apostleship of my life. Visit me with the apostleship of my destiny. That for which I was made. That for which I have been saved. Or being saved. That, that, will, that which will define me in you. And make me relevant to your kingdom. Lord, give me revelation. Lord, show me your manifestation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated, be seated. So there are degrees of apostleship. There's a general apostleship. And there is a ministerial apostleship. Church ministerial apostleship. But every believer, by the very core, by the very nature of your call as a believer, there is an apostleship attached to you. Now, don't go and tell somebody I am Apostle Benson. According to my papa in the Lord, since I have accepted the Lord, I have an apostleship. It's not necessary. It is about understanding. So let's go back to that scripture. See what God is telling. This is the whole thing. Go and tell these people. Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Do you, how do you like that kind of mission? God is not telling him, go and heal these people. If he went and told the people, God wants me to heal you, everybody will shoot. God is sending him on a mission of anger. God is angry with the people of Israel whom he has been speaking to and they don't listen, whom he has been talking to and they don't pay attention. And God is saying, now you are an apostle of anger. Go and tell them I'm angry with them. I'm angry at their stubbornness. I'm angry at their stiff neckedness. I am angry. So a lot of people just claim to be apostle. I thought, what is it? That? Because if it is really God sending you, sir, it's not very pleasurable. Though. And I've been telling you this, anybody who loves his call is not called. Anybody who really, really, like you love your call, you enjoy your call, and it's so sweet, that you are not called, or your call is inconsequential. If you are called like Paul, it will take something from you. Like Peter, it will take you from fishing. Take you from your familiar secure grounds to unknown places that will leave you insecure. It will leave you vulnerable and make you depend only on God. And flesh does not like to depend only on God. You love to depend on what you see. How much you have in your pocket. Because this call, sometimes God tells you go and you have nothing in your pocket. Nothing. Nothing. Like we just went to Oran, both for the crusade and now we went to plant church. That no budget. And the time I got the revelation was the end of last year. I announced to you, almost at the end of 40 days fast, we are going to Oran. Why did I not announce immediately? Because I was careful so that you can announce something and have to edit. Because God is saying go, but no budget, no money. Where are we going to get money? We have already taken money. People have already given their first fruit and have made donations for us to preach Goshen 2024. And you now say go to Oro. Do you know how much that costs? I will go, but I'm not going to announce it in a hurry. Just show me some money first. That's why I kept telling you I will announce to you later because I've tried to find out from God. So. <laughs> Yeah, because you can say we are coming to Aaron and everybody say they are coming to Aaron after some time. You say, well, the Lord um, has not released us to go now. Yes, sir, you cannot be telling about the Lord up and down. Today you say the Lord is this and the Lord is that. So for those of us who are called, some things you hear, you don't want to talk about it in a hurry. Because you are like telling God proof to me first. Hey, car, yeah. Then before you, I will talk with all sorts of confidence. The Lord has released me. <laughs> That's what I told you. The Lord has released me. We are going to Aaron. No, 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 we are going to somewhere. I didn't say wrong, so that I'm not implicated. And I didn't tell you date, but behind, I'm saying, I'm there. So what are we going to do? What are the details? You have not given me release in this business to go about begging people for money. 
The only two people I talked to about Oron, they didn't take it seriously. And I don't, don't, let's not go there. One, God told me his heart has moved. Don't even go there. The other one, in a dire situation that needs help, so you don't even have the boldness and confidence to talk because you know he needs a lot of your prayer. And these are the only two people you could have released to talk about the magnitude of the things that were involved. So what, are you, what is left for you is to sit down and say, God, so now if you are sending me, let's see how it goes. And God made arrangements. We went to Oron and had a mighty move of God. We have planted church. And I didn't ask church, come, let's make donation, bring offering, and let the whole church gather, let's go to Oron. Why? There is one who sends who made the arrangement. He's the one who sent the life call to Isaiah. He's the one who set up the vision of the seraphim. All of that was preparation. If God is involved, sir, he does not make too many people relevant. And in the process of God being involved, he leaves you sometimes blind. He leaves you sometimes deaf, dumb, weak, because he does not tell you everything. He does not show you everything. He does not give you everything at the time you want it. He just wants you to depend on him on a daily basis. You wake up in the morning and say, we are going to Oron. If you know, it does, even though you know, it doesn't look like we are going to Oron. You still tell yourself, I'm praying, Lord, we are going to Oron. Yes, I know. So he knows when you get to the point, you will meet what he has kept for you. But until you get to the point, you will not meet. So the call makes you vulnerable, makes you dependent. Is that the kind of thing you love? Chief, tell me, will you love that kind of life? Chief loves things, wired, he thinks to details. Everything has to be specified and everything detailed. But tell me, sometimes when I preach, you will just sit down and after I come and tell me, but I cannot understand why I know this thing you are talking. <laughs> he tells me that all the time. You know, I'm man of God, but I know you are praying, but you know, this thing doesn't make sense to me. I, I will tell him, it doesn't make sense to me also, but that's what I'm told to be seated. So... <laughs> It's not a pleasurable thing. It's away from yourself. Away from your deep confidence. It means you are not sent to depend on your power. You are sent away from your power. You are not sent to depend on your confidence. You are sent from your self-confidence. So that all your trust will be in God. Not your knowledge. Not your history. Not your story. Can you rise to your feet? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Show me the proof of my apostleship. Do you know, as a Christian parent, being sent to raise children is a mission. There is an arrangement. There is gathering. There is sending. There is support. God just said, I should come and talk to you about apostleship. Okay, be seated. Be seated. Be seated. So, you know who is an apostle, right? A messenger. One sent on a mission. A missionary. Those are you can say, in summary, who is, a, who is an apostle? One, one sent on a, a mission. A messenger. A missionary. He must be sent after the preparation, after the gathering of God. And he sent. And he sent away apo, apostolos. Apostolos. Apostolo. He sent away. He's not sent to himself, for himself, he sent away. So when any call is about the self of the person, the interest of the person, the convenience of the person, the personal benefit of the person, it already shows this one has no divine back. It's about the rights, the office, the pride, and the glory of the individual. Now, let's look at something Matthew chapter 10 verse 1 to 4. I think in a true sense of it, the only office Jesus constituted is the apostolic office. The only office he constituted by himself. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1 to 4. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, they were disciples. Disciples is not what he made, like he called them. No, disciple just means these people followed him. It happened because they believed in him. 
followed him. Some did not believe in him, but they followed him, followed his teaching. When the teaching became tough, they left and walked away and all of that, but they were followers. So among the people, he had said, follow me. Some he said, follow me. Some followed him. Some just like that, but there was following. He called 12 of these followers, disciples. He called his 12 disciples to him. He gave them power. Say preparation. Come on, let me hear you. Say preparation. Say arrangement. Now, are you getting the link? In a brief demonstration that I made, I have talked about the madam giving the rice and the husband not eating the meat because we are making arrangement to give so that this man can be away. So the first thing, after calling them to himself, he prepared them. He gave them power. Say power. Power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of, of sickness and all kinds of disease. Now, the names of the 12 apostles are these. But the first thing about preparation. I don't have time to go into another scripture that he had to send them. But the first thing is that he prepared them. This is not a teaching fully about apostleship. We we'll go, we'll go into, into revelation about... Now, let's, let's go to Acts of Apostles chapter 1. Let's read from verse 1, a couple of verses from verse 1. The former account I made all Theophilus of all that Jesus began to, both to do and teach. Next verse. Until the day in which he was taken up after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. He chose them. He had given them power, gave them authority. The word here in Matthew chapter 10 verse 1, the word power here is exousia. Give them authority, exousia. The right to use his power to cast out demons. Now go back to that act of apostle. Is it whom he had chosen? Next verse. Next verse. Come on. To whom he also did what? Presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs. Preparation. Say preparation. Being seen by them, say preparation. During 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, say preparation. He did not go about preaching to everyone, going away. For 40 days after his resurrection, he returned to the seminary, took them back to college, a spiritual college, taught them mysteries about the kingdom. Fortunately, for those 40 days, we are not told he told them anything about denomination or church. It was about the kingdom of the Father. Church is a place for us to show that kingdom of the Father. It's not a society unto itself and by itself. It's for a purpose. The body for the head. And for the, the head is about the rulership, the headship of the Father. So, an apostle belongs to the highest office. In the body of Christ. Because that is what Jesus directly instituted. Directly instituted and commissioned. Say so all authority, all power in heaven and earth has been, has been given to me. Go! Those who sins you forgive, I forgive them. Send them, commission them. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. I told you I came today to do some teaching. Came today to give you knowledge. And connect you to this knowledge. Can you read it with me? Everyone, read it with me. Everyone, everyone. Come on, come on. Everyone. He himself gave some. He didn't give authority to anyone to dish it to himself. It's not even the right of a bishop to just wake up one day or the pastor one day, you just sit down because this one does what you like. This one brings a lot of tight because what happens in churches now when people have resources and people want to keep them, they give them title. 
ordained them. Sharp, 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 sharp. Many of you have been ordained in that order of ordination. Because people began to see that your tithe made sense. And your offering made sense. So the way to keep you a short banger. That kind of English still exists. Does it exist? To make sure you don't run away. Give you title. And make it very clear to you. You don't go to another church. Hands have been laid on you. So you cannot go to any other place. That means we possess you. Possess your bank account and your resources. And you walk around. Having title without that divine backing. If I was going to be a person, I was going to be a person. But I can't buy title again. Which is harassing you everywhere. And your title cannot help you. Because a man, a man constituted you into a pillar of salt. Like the wife of Lord, so that you don't move. So we can use you to make our soup salty. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, right? Do you accept it? It doesn't exist. <laughs> he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. The very first one, each time the hierarchy comes up, the apostolic. In the early church, after everything, you have to fall back to apostles. The apostle Paul, after he came into the arena, had to go to Jerusalem for right hand of fellowship to be recognized by the apostle. They were called apostles and elders. They were elders because they were foremost, but they were foremost because they were sent. <laughs> they were elders because they were foremost, the highest in rank and authority. And the only reason they were highest in rank and authority is because they had been sent, prepared, arranged, and sent away. Sent away. That's why when Peter went fishing in, Acts, in John, I think it should be chap chapter 21, 20, chapter getting into, uh, uh, when John went into fish, uh, when Peter said, I'm going fishing, and other disciples, I'm going to, I'm going to, Jesus Christ had to go and ask him, do you love me more than this? Or you want to prefer this? He said, you know, I love you. He said, feed my, don't go back to fishing. Feed these ones. Feed them. It's not about what you are comfortable with. Peter was comfortable with fishing. But just guys say, it's not about your comfort. Feed this one. You are away from your interest. So apostleship is the highest office in a Christian calling, in a Christian ministry. Encounter, this is the point, I'm almost done. Rise before, before I speak, because this one is coming closer. Rise and raise your right hand. Just speak in the Holy Ghost. Say, this whole thing is about me. This speaking is about me. The grace today is about me. Come on, speak in the Holy Ghost. When I say speak in the Holy Ghost, I don't say you should meditate in the Holy Ghost. Speak less something hear you. Say, it's not about my ability. It's not about my capacity. There is the one who justifies. There is the one who knew me beforehand. For those he knew beforehand, he also called. He set them apart. Consecrated, dedicated them. He called them. He justified them. And then glorified them. Say, Lord, I know it's not about me. It's not about what I can do. It's you. It's not the one who will it. Not the one who run it. But the one whom God showed mercy. Shout Jesus. Shout it louder. Jesus. Be seated. Now, the basis for this apostolic mission in the church. The basis for apostleship is encounter with the resurrection. Why is it that out of the 12 apostles, out of the 12 apostles, it was the 11 that saw the coming. Oh, it was the 11 that encountered the resurrection. And they now had to elect somebody who was close to them from the beginning and had witnessed the death and had come into the place of the resurrection. Why is Judas not mentioned now 
He was originally called, but there is no office called the office of Judas. Judah is carried. He did not encounter the resurrection. He did not live to see the resurrection. He was not part of the resurrection economy. He saw the death. He witnessed the death, orchestrated the death of Jesus. It is not the death of Jesus Christ that makes one an apostle. Just saying that Jesus Christ died does not make much difference. It is a, an encounter with the resurrection. Galatians chapter 1. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Galatians chapter 1. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Galatians chapter 1 verses 11 and 12. Paul, I will, pref I will give you as a personal gift. Read Galatians. Read Galatians, the book of the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Read all of it. The real dispute, the real contention, the real problem in the letter, what Paul was addressing was that after he went and made disciples for Christ in Galatia, as he left, other preachers that were faithful to the laws of the Jews, there were Christians who were Judaizers. Judaizers were those who were Christians but zealous for the law. They still wanted to keep all the laws of Moses and believe in Jesus Christ. So they went around in all the places that Paul had preached and said, you know, that Paul is not even an apostle. Home. Ask him, he's not among the twelve. He was not called with Peter. So don't believe what he's telling you. If he tells you not to obey the law of Moses, it's because he does not know. That is the basis for the letter of Gal the, to the Galatians. And that's why you see that in the letter to the Galatians, Paul defends his apostleship from A to Z. Let's look at Galatians chapter 1, verse 11 to 12. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. He's making a claim now. I was not taught by Peter. I was not taught by James. He was not in Jerusalem. So if they have come to tell you all of this, I am now telling you that it was not from man. Can we read further? That the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it. Read it, continue. Come on, come on, read it, continue. The revelation of Jesus Christ, not before he died, after he rose. That is why if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, when Paul was talking about the resurrection, he talked about how he rose, showed himself, showed himself to the 12, to 500, and some of whom are still alive. And last of all, he showed himself to me. So Paul is claiming, I may not have been with the other 12. I saw the risen Lord. Acts of Apostles chapter 9. I may not have walked with Peter. I may not have been caught. caught I, may have, I may not have been called from the lake side of Genesaret. From the lake of Galilee. But I saw the Lord. What made Peter an apostle at the real, in the real sense of it? At the foundational, if after he had been called uh, and he followed Jesus, that was all. He was a disciple. He said, follow me. That's discipleship. But apostle, he was prepared. And after Jesus rose, he said, do not leave Jerusalem until that which I promise you. And he taught them for 40 days of the mysteries of the kingdom. And he said, you shall receive power when the spirit comes upon you. And all of them, they had fellowship with the risen Lord. It was their fellowship with the risen Lord. Lord, that brought about the outpouring of the Holy Ghost it was their fellowship with the risen law that inaugurated the apostleship. So Paul is opening the window for us. You may not have been there with Peter. You may not have been there with, with, with James. But the day you have encounter of the resurrection, something happens. You become a missionary. I have only one scripture. I'll be done. Just one. Can you allow me to give you one more scripture? Don't feel confused. That is what I'm talking about as general apostleship and ministerial apostleship. All of them are based on encounter with who? There is. 
Just one scripture. That's the scripture we saw last week. Rise to your feet. Say in the name of Jesus Christ. I to have a plan from God. There is a preparation for me from God. That will turn me into a missionary. That will send me away from destruction. That will send me from darkness. That will send me from the original destiny of the ancestors. And locate me in the inheritance of the risen Lord. That will locate me in the inheritance of the saints and light. Shout apostolos. Say I'm away from destruction. Say apostolos. I am away from former things. Say apostolos. I am away from old things. Say apostolos. I accept to be taken away from former things. I accept to be taken away from old things. I accept to be sent away from dead things. I accept the mission of God over my life. I accept the mission of God over my finances. I accept the mission of God over my marriage. I accept the mission of God over my children. Shout Jesus! Be seated. Just one last scripture. One last scripture. One last scripture. This is the scripture we saw last week. John chapter 20. Because of time and context. Let's just read from verse 11. I'm done. I'm done. Sincerely, I'm done. Sincerely, I'm so done. But Mary, remember this point. Do you remember this point? Is that familiar? Peter had gone. John had gone. Mary had nowhere to go back to. No former life to return to. Seven demons made her seven or made her manifest Satan in seven ways. It means the seven days of the week. Mary Magdalene had Satan, diversity of gifts from Satan. Seven demons cast out from a woman means she had diverse gifts of Satan. On certain days, she will be seductive. On other days, she will be violent. On other days, she will be defrauding, fraudulent. On other days, she, or every day came, came with a unique package. Seven means complete. It means she was totally possessed and totally used of Satan. That's the story of Magdalene. When Jesus cast out those seven demons, no former place to go to. Peter had fish, fishing to go back to Mary Magdalene. They could not go back to the demons. Could not go back to seduction. Could not go back to depression. Could not go back to violence. Could not go back to deception, deceiving people. Could not go back to fraud. Could not go back to anywhere. Those things are gone. Peter said, let's go back home. And was beginning to think of going back to fishing. Eventually he did. But Mary Magdalene, nothing to go back to. He had only Jesus left for him. The demons that used him, her, I mean, left for her. The demons that used her had left her. Whatever profits you get from, she could get from those demons, those profits could no longer come because only the Lord will be our helper. That's why she stood and wept. Why are we in a hurry to leave? We have many things to go back to. So when we come to the Lord and we accept him as his, our Lord and Savior and things become tough, we cannot stand and stare into the empty tomb. There is the man who has been begging us to come back that will accept us when we go. So it's just about calling. Ah, you called me? Tell me wherever you want me to meet you, I will meet you. At midnight, I will drive and meet you on the mountain. You, you called me? Thank you so much. I didn't even know you will ever call me. You blocked me everywhere. Because you have something to go back. You, because you have friends who fit from Satan to go back to. Because you have lies and dishonesty to go back to. Because you have all the wuru wuru and corner corner to go back to. So staying and staring into empty tomb is punishment. When you have options. Options of secret cult. Of joining cult in order to have business leverage. So standing and weeping in the presence of nothing. Everybody's telling you, but this case is not a case for prayer. 
Why don't you? I want to I want to them. I want to help them. Heaven helps those who help themselves. So why don't you? And you say, no, this is not a matter. All my fountains are found in God. As the eyes of a slave girl looked onto the hands of the mistress, so my eyes are onto the Lord until. I look onto the hills from where my help comes. My help comes from the Lord. So you're standing and staring and crying. It doesn't make sense. And friends will tell you, you are mumu, you are stupid. You are still young. You are still beautiful. If this kind of thing happens, give yourself a break. Give yourself a break. You are not talking like you have been my friend. What spell is over you? Shake this thing off. Mary, Mary Magdalene had nothing to shake off. She was looking into the empty tomb. Not looking and smiling. Look at it. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. Was weeping. I have nowhere to go back to. The reason why you don't weep. The reason church is boring. You have nothing to go back to. We were in a, in a, a camp from Thursday till yesterday. I see a one young man that has not even started life. Has no company. Has no business. He's only one year in the university. And all of that. And sitting down. And I'm preaching the power of the Holy Ghost. And he will take his phone. Look at her <laughs> and walk out. And I told myself, I will not be distracted by this. Patrick, you are not going to talk. Just pity him and leave him alone. And before he, he could reach the media stand, the call had ended. He stood there looking at it, looking at it. He moved around for some time, came and sat down. You see another person taking phone and then, like it's a serious thing, serious thing. You are in the presence of the Almighty. Tell me that call is a call you've been waiting for. Is a call that call. But if it's just a matter of like, I have a call. I don't want to miss this call. So the day God wants to bless you, you have 100, 100 calls from one person. He will not sleep. Do you know there are meetings you go, you don't use your phone. I'm sure you know. I'm talking about human meetings. You don't go into a place with phone. Go to governor's office. Who are you to pick your phone? To take your phone there. No matter who calls you, you will come and see the, and you sit in the presence of God. The reason it doesn't matter to you because you have some people to go back to. That's why we don't see the power of God. Because honor is useless and, and empty. And if you don't honor him, there are things that come to you not because you fast and pray. There are things that come to you because you honor him. And honor is a total package. Some people will dishonor me and disrespect me. And when I tell them, you dishonor me, they say, I honor you, sir. I feel like slapping them. But they say, no, you're the pastor. And even this man, even in a physical fight, you don't know how it will end, so you just keep quiet. But it's very painful. How dare you tell me you dishonor me when I see actions and gestures all over telling you I have no value before you. And I, I am telling you the feedback, what I see. And you say, don't say that, sir, I honor you. I just look at those people. I say, thank God my children are not grown up. I will have said, Dad, oh, I wouldn't make him come beat up this man. Very annoying. So that's the reason why the power is lacking in church. And everyone is running around looking for one superman, one superwoman who is mommy this and papa that and bear that and all the stuffs. So I'm not against man, men of God being mighty. I'm not against women of God being mighty. The kingdom of God will not be built upon few men of God who are mighty. The kingdom of God will not be revealed on the back of few women who are mighty or claim to be mighty. The kingdom of God will be revealed wherever a believer is and a believer Believer who honors God, God will honor him. God will honor that person. So Magdalene honored the Lord. She stood there. Honor is value. What you honor is what is valuable. What you honor is what you spend time upon. What you honor is what you spend resources upon. Show me, tell me I honor something. I will tell you, you spend your time around that thing. You spend your resources about that. You invest your attention, your diligence, your excellence. Everything is upon the place of honor. What you don't honor, you treat lightly. You treat cheaply. You are in a hurry to walk away. You are, there are people who talk to you and you look at them and you, and you walk away. There's no honor. There are people who talk to you. 
you dare not look at them in the eyes. You stand. Even when they tell you, get out of my sight, you kneel down. And the order you get out of my sight, you lie down. Get out of my sight, you roll. In three ways, you have told the person, I have no option. Value is here. Value is here. I have no option. This is value. This is value. You are in a hurry to leave. Leave God. Or you pray one minute and it looks like eternity. Because you have other options. If God doesn't answer me, my Godfather will answer me. Mommy will answer me. My lesbian mother will answer me. My homosexual part, senior partner will answer me. My court friend will answer me. So God, if you like, you answer me. If you don't like, you don't answer me. Magdalene, Mary Magdalene stood there. I'm done. Don't want to preach. I'm, done. I'm sorry. I've taken so much time. I thought I should be done by now. I'm done. And as she wept, she stood, stooped down and looked into the tomb. Now, because there is no option. Now, you remember. Do you now understand it? Where do I go back to? Where there is nowhere. I cannot fit into that man. The other woman, no. The other place, no. The other place, no. Magdala does not have a place for me. I have only one accommodation. All my options are in him. All my options is salvation, is deliverance, is, is I, I will stand here. Where, whoever took him should come and take me also. Next verse. Come on, run with him. And she saw two angels in white sitting one at the head and the other at the feet. Next verse. Then they said to a woman, why are you weeping? Next verse. We saw this. I'm running to something. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. You will see when you stay long enough. You will see when you hang in for long enough. When you dig in for long enough. When you stay for long enough. When you cry for long enough. When, when you pray for long enough. When you fast for long enough. When you believe for long enough. When you remain consecrated for long enough. You will see the Lord. You will see the healing of the Lord. You will see the deliverance of the Lord. Just hang in. Just stay longer than your fear. Just stay longer than your impatience. Just, just stay longer than your horror. Just stay longer than the devil. Just stay longer than the heat. Just make sure you stay longer. Stay. Stay believing. And did not know that it was Jesus. Come on. Next verse. Jesus said to a woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? You know the rest. Sir, if you carry them away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Next verse, come on. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned around and said to him, Rabboni. It has, it has come back to me. You know, resurrection is anastasis. Remember, Mary is up again. She's able to see the Lord. She's up again. She's able to see the Lord. She is confident again. Rabboni is the language of confidence. Rabboni means I'm not alone. Rabboni means I will be taught. Rabboni means I will no longer go astray. Rabboni meaning teacher means I will be taught the way of prosperity. I will not be poor. I will be shown the way of godliness. I will not be godless. Rabboni means I have a future. Rabboni means there is light at the end of the turn. Rabboni means I am back to strength. I am back to health. Rabboni means I am still here. Rabboni means those who are given up on me, they made a mistake about me. Rabboni means whatever the devil had planned will not come to pass. Rabboni means now we the wrong things again. I will dance again. Njaman and Kwa. Rabboni means there is a song again. And there is a song in my soul. And it feels like a melody in my spirit. Rabboni means joy has come back Anastasis uh, when you meet him after his resurrection when you meet the resurrection when you encounter the risen Lord the Lord who is alive uh, your joy comes back uh, your swag comes back uh, your might comes back uh, your strength comes back uh, your purity comes back uh, your consecration comes back when you wait long enough uh, to see his risen glory uh, you come back to where they said you will die and you prosper you come back to where you are failed and you succeed you come back to where you were buried 
and you roll in the midst of your foes. Stand up and shout, Rabbon! Who told you there is death? For believers, there is no death. I will go to be with the Lord, but it's not, it shall not be death. It shall be a call to higher things. I shall be taken into higher states. Death died on the cross. Death is shame. Death is defeat. Death is destruction. Death is annihilation. Death is, 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 is damnation. Death is hell. I shall not die. I shall be raised up with him on the last day. When he wants to call me home, he will take me home. That shall not be called death. That is why I told you, don't, don't, don't keep me in lying state. Nobody will see my face like I am one of those who died. No, I have finished my assignment when that day comes. And I shall go to be with my master. Don't keep me for too long for preparation. Just sing me and let me go at the rising of the sun. Put my body to rest in a secure term, knowing that I have entered into an, a, a higher state. I have enjoyed Anna before the Anastasis. I have gone up to see the Lord before the general resurrection. I have enjoyed personal Anna. So there are two levels of resurrection, even three levels of resurrection. But I want to talk about one level of resurrection, the resurrection that is about rising above, rising after that the body has failed uh, you go up to where there shall be nobody where you shall be totally free from cancer where no tumor will harass you that is what christians enjoy and those who have all the private jets and yachts and islands uh, and do not know christ when they die they are buried uh, the scripture talks about the poor man called lazarus uh, and a rich man uh, when lazarus died uh, he was taken by the angel to the bosom of the lord the bosom of abraham but when the rich man died he was buried Burial is for those who have not encountered the risen Lord. Now, I, I, I'm struggling to give you all the message. Run with me to another scripture. I mean to that next verse. While you still stay there, Mary turn. Jesus said to her, do not cling. Yeah, this is it. Everybody read this one. Read this one. Read this one. This is the last verse. Everyone want to go. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me. For I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Whom to whom was this address? Tell me like BK of all. Tell me like CRK of all. Tell me like literature of all. To whom was this address? Magdalene, who spoke these words? Jesus. For what purpose ah, uh, you answer? On what occasion? The occasion of looking into the mystery of the resurrection. Give me that scripture. So do not cling to me. For I am not yet ascended to my father. The first person to hear that was the person who stayed longer. The first person to have conversation with the one who rose after death. He's not the one who had title. He's not the one that was ordained. Mary Magdalene had no ordination. But she's the first apostle of the resurrection. All the gospels refer to Mary Magdalene as going early to meet the tomb. To see Jesus at the tomb. So, resurrection is the basis of apostleship. All the preparation, you could see it. All the weeping and the standing and the looking again and the angelic, all of those preparation. Then after that, mission. Go. Go away. From this place, go. To who? My brethren. To Peter, who is the rock. To James, one of the elders. Go to these mighty people. Be the one to say to them, so seniority in Christianity is not each. No men am poor as him in Pene, a 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 Pene, a
So I've done the, I've, I've, I have been in this call for, oh, uh, for a long time. And you people just started. So somebody could have started yesterday and is older than you in age. Spiritual age. When you, are, when you encounter the risen Lord, you are the apostle. You are the missionary. You are the carrier of the message. Tell me when last did somebody see you and say, I've seen the Lord. When, did that, when last did somebody see you and got a message of salvation? When last did you even feel a burden to witness? When last was your life a revelation? The reason is because you have not yet seen the Lord. You have not encountered the Lord. You cannot encounter him and not be a missionary. The day you encounter him, you have something to tell somebody. Your encounter with the risen Lord is an apostleship. Paul said, I saw him. He sent me to the Gentiles. That is it. Encounter. These days we are no longer talking about encounter with the risen Lord. Apostleship has become an ecclesiastical thing. Politics. And, and arrogance of social, social economy in the church. But the Lord wants us to bring back the apostolic age. And the understanding of the apostolic age. Fellowship with the risen one. As a result of which there is a change in your life constitutes you into an apostle whether you are Mary Magdalene formerly known for all the bad things in this world, it does not matter that is before the resurrection in the name of Jesus, rise to your feet lift up your two hands and close your eyes I don't care whether you have known the Lord for 100 years, that's not my interest what matters is the result Ask the Lord, please give me in my life evidence of your resurrection. Make my life a testimony and a proof. In my business, let there be a mark of the resurrection. Speak personally. As a young girl, say, Lord, I am not afraid to carry the proof of your resurrection. I am not afraid. Say, Lord, I am not afraid. As a young man, say, Lord, I have wasted all my time pursuing vanity. The rest of my life, I want to be a missionary that you are risen. Give me power to heal the sick, to show the world you are risen. You are risen. Make me a messenger of restoration. Lord, put a mark of your power over my life. I want to see you. I want to know you. Please ask him for encounter. Like Mary, weep when everyone is gone. Like Mary, stand when everybody is tired. So Lord, if you could make Mary a messenger to other apostles or to the main apostles you can make me a messenger to my generation you can bless me and make me a messenger of blessings to my generation you can heal me and make me a messenger of healing to my generation you can change me and make me a messenger of change to my generation who is speaking? Who is speaking? Or, or you are not speaking because you have called to go back to you are not speaking because you have prostitution to go back to. You are not speaking because you have friends to go back to. Mary Magdalene had nothing to go back to. So speak. Say all that is left for me is Jesus. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. Halabo shattered. All I need is you. It's you, Lord. All I need is you. Halabou Sikatak. Halabrasata. All I need is you, Lord. Halabou Sikat. It's you, Lord. All I need is you. Halabou Sikatak. All I need is you. It's you. All I need is you. 
Say all I need is you Is you Lord All I need is you All I need is you All I need is you is you, Lord, all I need is you. All I need is you. It's you, Lord, all I need is you. All I need is you. It's you, Lord, all I need is you. All I need is you. It's you, all I need is you. I can say, all I have is you. All I have is you. All I have is you. Speak in the Holy Ghost. If you leave me, I will die. If I don't have you, I have nothing. If I don't have you, I have nothing. It's not marriage I have with you. It's not husband I have with you. It's not wife I have with you. My real possession is not my office. My real possession is not my title. My real possession is not anything. It's you. It is not strength I have, I have you. I, have you I don't have fruitfulness, I have you. It's you you Lord, are everything, Lord. I have you. All I have is you. Those two hands and speak to him. All I need is you. I need you in my husband. I need you in my wife. I need you in my business. I need you in my job. I need you in my health. I need you in my family. I need you in my company. I need you in my political career. I need you. I need you. I need you. Everyone I need You are So beautiful And you are Everything I need And Lord you are Yes you are All I need Can you just begin to speak in the Holy Ghost? Lay your hand where you need, where you need healing. Lay your hand where you need healing. 
There is miracle in this hour. There is a resurrection power. I don't need money. I need you in money. I don't need wealth. I need you in wealth. I don't need power. I need you in power. I don't need life. I need you in my life. Heal the sea, raise the dead. Feel everyone here with your spirit. Let the resurrection power lay your right hand on your forehead. Let the resurrection power come into you. Let a new life come into you. Let a new breath of God come. Let a new vision come. Let new parts of your body grow. Let, let all parts be replaced. Let, let there be regeneration. Be up again. Be up again. Speak to parts of your body. Come back up again. Speak anastasis. Speak anastasis. Speak anastasis. I am up again. I am strong again. I am healed again. I am restored again. I am changed again. 